You're working with this new hope? Yes, Operation New Hope. We're working with Operation New Hope. So this is here in the United States? Yes. Uh, is it any places other than in Florida? Yes, I mean, it's, it's based in Jacksonville, Florida. And they have offices in Tallahassee, in Tampa. They're opening an office now here in St. Augustine to further the work of helping formerly incarcerated uh, citizens find meaningful pathways to successful reentry. And if you have to, uh, in a sentence, say, what is the goal of New Hope? The, opposite, the, goal, the fundamental goal of Operation New Hope is to bring restorative justice practices to communities so that families and communities can be restored in a way that holds everyone accountable for doing and being their best. Okay. And what is your relationship with Makaziwi? Makaziwi and Mandela, Dr. Dr. Makaziwi Mandela and I are very dear friends. We became pen pals while I was in prison. And 25 years later, I moved to South Africa after serving 20 years in prison. I moved to South Africa and her and I began to do work together. And ultimately, I became chief advisor for the Mandela family. And so my last question. Well, this is all about raising consciousness so that people recognize the power of personal choice and the power to transform their lives on an individual level as well as the collective level. 27 years, 6 months, 6 days, cast into an island, locked inside a cage, told that he must stay until he breathed no more. But opening your mind will be the key to open doors. I watched my mama fight a habit she began when she was young. Things will seem impossible until you see them done. Mandela's quotes are affirmations worth repeating to ourselves. I was praying hard for mom when they unlocked his cell. And if you close your eyes and listen, you can almost hear their praise. People gather everywhere to form a world parade. Flags of every culture singing songs in acapella. Global chants erupting, may we rise up like Mandela. May we rise up like Mandela, may we rise up like Mandela. Some things we can't do alone, we have to do together. There was anger, there was rage, guns and knives were raised. Plans were set to pay them back for taking him away from the arms of those who love him, from his wife and from his kids, from his dreams and aspirations, from the life he tried to live. But as one of the greatest leaders that has ever walked this land, he told them that their guns would not be useful for his plans. He took a stand and said that peace is the only way to start, that he still be in prison having hatred in his heart. Forgiveness equals freedom. All that's done is all that's done. We could lose the war counting the battles that we've won. I laid down all my anger. Grandma told me to forgive. She said your mother's ill, but you still love her while she lives. And I loved her while she lived. It wasn't easy, I recall. But Nelson said that glory lies in rising from your falls. He went from prisoner to president, from shackled down to suited. We rarely see the light within the tone going through it. He took his fears and conquered them. His pain was his propeller. Second chance is given. Now my mom is so much better. Lessons of forgiveness merged, and she's been writing letters, trying to get a job. I'm awfully glad I never left her. For sometimes she feels low, and I must sit her down and tell her there's a man who kept his dream and changed this world forever. So don't give up and keep your dream. Reward will follow ever. When Debo went through storms and turned his thoughts into his shelter. When times get rough, we rise with love, and we win because we never. Give up hope, we rise to show, we rise up like Mandela. I'm Karen Goldman, and I'm the executive director and founder of Compassionate St. Augustine. And I sincerely, sincerely want to thank you. Thank you for being here for this very, very special occasion. An occasion that honors the life and legacy of Nelson Mandela the day after his 101st birthday. So let's hear it. Happy birthday, Nelson Mandela. Happy birthday. We also have probably some of the most esteemed guests that we've had in our city for a long, long time. Dr. Makazili Mandela and her daughter, Tukrini. And I've had the pleasure and honor of being with them at a couple of events already. And the fact that this partnership is growing with Operation New Hope and the House of Mandela is so exciting. One of my favorite quotes, if I am not for myself, 
who will be for me? But if I am only for myself, who am I? It's not now, when. And that's, it didn't matter whether Nelson Mandela, who traveled such a long road from prison to president, said or wrote those words. However, what did matter was the way in which he truly embodied that quote in his thoughts, words, and deeds. And not only did he embody them as a result of who he was and what he stood for, he also invited and inspired people worldwide to do the same. There's Khalil Osiris, an author, educator, inspirator, and the CEO of Reflecting Freedom, a social enterprise company. Those of you who met Khalil at the launch know that he is a dear friend of both Dr. Magazine Mandela and to Queenie, and he is directly responsible for the fact that they are here in the United States, but not just in the United States. They are here because of Florida and the first Nelson Mandela International Day that was celebrated yesterday in Jacksonville, and by our proclamation here, also St. Augustine. So, but I think the most important thing at this point to know is that Dr. Mandela and Tu Queenie both grew up knowing what the words, if not now, when, mean, from Nelson Mandela's stories, actions, and legacy. And they know it in ways that define definition. If not now, when? With those words in mind, please allow me the privilege of telling you about an amazing St. John's County Community Collaborative, now known as Friends of Operation New Hope, and that grassroots emphasis tireless efforts to bring Operation New Hope here matter. Moreover, it's been proven by Operation New Hope over the last 20 years that it also means that our Ready for Work graduates will not only earn money, but other things that are priceless that include an enhanced degree of self-worth. Self-worth and pride that bestows new hope, new hope for their futures that can and will be a blessing and that also blesses their families, friends, neighbors, employers, you and me and our community at large. If not now, when? Thank you. I gotta tell you that uh, if I get emotional, this has been an emotional week for all of us because you can't spend time with these wonderful ladies and not be touched by the heart. And so, uh, but I gotta tell you that uh, for me, this is this is a special moment. Uh, living in Jacksonville all my life, all 25 years, I uh, <laughs> don't feel it so much. You know, I, I, I've fallen in love with this city. I mean, I think this has been a place that I've come to recharge and to exhale and breathe. And over time, I've really truly fell all in love with the people here. As I shared earlier, for those of you who weren't here, I love, I read recently that Coretta Scott King talked about community, and she talked about the most beautiful, resilient communities are really truly most accurately measured by the compassionate action of its members. And that's exactly what we have in this wonderful community. And so, and so our hearts were transformed, and it takes a transformation to do this work. And 20 years ago, it was like pushing a rock up the hill. Nobody wanted to talk about second chances. But I can tell you, if it's ever going to happen, it's going to happen in a community like this. And I mean this, and I think for, for those of you who live here, I know you know this, but you need to take a moment because we work all around the country, and we're in Tampa and Tallahassee, there's nothing happening in those cities that can happen in here. So I just want to say a big thank you to all of you. But what I'd like to do is, we're closing down towards the end of this project, 
this initiative here in St. Augustine, and we think that it's not just important at a historic level, it's important at a very deep spiritual level, at a very personal level Amen. for those of us who have showed up and who are here. We hear so much about prison, and most of the time we create even divides in the space of the places where we think we're united. We still end up divided. And what I mean by that is when you hear prison, typically you think about the other if you've not been a person who's been in a physical prison. It's always the other. What I'd like to say to you in our work, the work that Kevin really pointed to about that key element, that kind of critical turning point that gets someone to move from a place of being um, an offender, a person who literally has no regret for the crimes they have committed, to recognizing that there's something that they must do differently themselves. And so, in our work, prison is a metaphor for self-imposed limitations. I really want you to think about this for a second. It's easy for us to refer to the broken system. That narrative is so popular that most of us, especially those of us who are liberal and good-minded and good-hearted and want to see the system change, we focus all of our attention right there. The challenge with that is that our situation, our, our, really our real problem is much more nuanced. It's not just a broken system, it's the wounded people yes. who are making horrific choices that puts them in harm's way that makes, then activates the system. So here's what I want to say. Saint, in St. Augustine, here's what I really want you to know. No one is asking you to have people come back to your community that are not part of your community, who don't care about the things that you care about. This is not foreigners invading St. Augustine. These are returning citizens, individuals who come back to this community because they belong here. They are your brothers, your sisters, your nephews, your nieces, your uncles, your fathers. These are not strangers, and we ought not treat them like strangers. And at the same time, we can hold them accountable. We can say, you went, you committed this offense, we want you to take responsibility for the offense that you committed and do something different. Change the way you behave. And I know the anger towards this administration and all those kinds of things, but let me just tell you that this story from the side of someone who's been a perpetrator, one who has been guilty of committing the crimes, one who doesn't say, I didn't go to prison because I was innocent. I went because I was guilty. And I did more than I went to prison for. So let me just say to you from someone who accepts responsibility for their poor choices. I recognize that there was a man who was in there innocently and didn't complain, but instead found a way to create an alternative example of what was possible. And I said to the other prisoners, we are guilty. We did more than what we're here for. How can you tell me you're going to complain? No, turn the cell into a classroom and the prison into a university. Be really clear about what we can do. If you tell me the system is broken, guess what? I will make it so costly for a person to go to prison in terms of turning the system around. Because when they come there, they're going to go to school. They're going to learn. They're going to transform their lives. It will be a place, a bastion of hope. Dr. McAsee, you may help.
change. Even Martin Luther King in this country went with a number of colleagues, some of them sung and some of them unsung heroes. Yes. But it was the spirit of coming together, of working together, that brought about change in this country. And so what I want to say, change in this country in terms of social justice issues, in terms of prison reform, won't happen just because Kevin Gay took the initiative. It will happen because Kevin Gay has a lot of people who believe mm -hmm. in his ideals and support him. And so the success of this community depends on unity and togetherness. But what I want also to say is that uh, I came here on a Fulbright scholarship, I think in 1985. And I think the America that I experienced then is not the same America that I am experiencing today. It is quite different. Um, and I think America prides itself that it is maybe the only superpower in the world. And when I came here as a Fulbright scholar in 1985, we were told that America is a great experiment. Experiment not in terms of its military might or power, as I said, an experiment in terms of how it creates one nation, unity, togetherness, a, a nation of compassion and of love, and actually of helping other people in the world. Germany, Europe would not have succeeded after the Second World War if it was not for the Marshall Plan that was initiated by America. That's the America that people know and understand. For us, as we look at America today, out of South Africa, we have a lot of challenges. But I think South Africa, if you compare South Africa today and America, in terms of race relations, in terms of social justice issues, I think we are far ahead of America. And America is the same. So, my, my challenge is, my challenge to you, and I think that coming here, has been an eye opener for me because there are lots of good things that are happening in Jacksonville. I think here we are seeing women of compassion taking the initiative. But Kevin, I want to say to you, yes, there is light coming, but unless that light overcomes evil, it will be stifled. And so what I want to say, we need to be bombarded by good news. Yes. by acts of kindness. It can't be things that are happening in isolation. These things need to be shouted because unless you are having on the East Coast initiative, on the, on the West Coast initiative, North and South of America, it will not change. It cannot be that America and the First World will have people incarcerated. They come out, they can go, they can have home, they can... We don't have that kind of system in South Africa, a country that has been had in division. It is condemning people to a life of error, yeah. lack of a better way. And so that has to change if America is going to regain its credibility, its moral authority in the world, things have got to change here and change fundamentally. We by seeing all of your hands with us, support it because we couldn't do defeat apartheid in South Africa without the help of people in this country, in Australia, all over the world. So but Americans have got to take the initiative, be courageous, be bold. But also it demands that every day when you wake up you ask yourself, what is the little act of kindness I'm going to do? Yeah. And kindness yes. doesn't mean you are going to make every day. It means you get in the lift, you don't know somebody, you see a bad person if you're white, don't go back into the little boat, oh God, I'm going to die today. Extend the hand, talk to that person, try to understand people who are different from you. This country is the country of immigrants. It is a, it is a rich diversity of all colors, cultures and everything. And that's how this country was built. You have to continue on that. That's how we continue respecting. America. Thank you very much.